Yay! This is Friday, January 6th, as we're going to get into more Fably stuff. Uh, your old book report will help you at home. It's not going to be any good because it'll be gone by the time you get back. Uh, your old novel, uh, whether it was The Shadow Club or Outsiders, you can trade that in for either 5B points or Monkey Taffy. Um, or you can keep it, but I never had to try to offer to buy it. Tie game was People, My Family, Beatles, Basketball. And then we have our homework assignment, which you'll have to download from the new page on my website. The homework files, Fable info, and then on there is the Fable homework, which is going to connect to Monday. Excuse me, we have a quiz on Monday, which is going to be over our notes, and then you're going to have to read some fables and figure out what's going on in them and stuff like that. Pew. Let's see, then review where we were yesterday. Let's see what knowledge we have. We had three different types of fables that we were getting into. Snitter, um, you have your choice of any of the three types. Pick one and explain what kind of type it is to me. Traditional. Traditional. And what can you tell me about a traditional fable? It's old. It's like old. Like my beard. Well done. Traditional, it is all old timey from a long time ago. This would be where you're writing stuff down. Oh, just you. Everyone else has the stuff written down. And then we have two other types that are up there. Chavez, Chavez. Pick one of the other types. Um, modern. Modern. And how would you describe modern? Our times. I was going to use the scientific term today -y, but sure, our times would work. And then Zaloy, we have a one more type. Um, verse. And how would you describe a verse? It's written like a poem. Well done. Written like a poem. And then modern is where we use this today -y stuff. All of our fables in order all of our fables in order to exist as a fable. Fine. Boo hiss. What is it every fable has to have? Moral. Not done. Then what is a moral? A lesson in a book. Oh, it's a good job, I guess you got that part. It is going to be the lesson learned advice that observation on human nature, and we talked about the five characteristics of what a fable is. Uh, characteristic number one, not opening your notebook and trying to cheat. Look at those notes that I tried to torment you. I see my information <laughs> still in your heads. We'll go, ooh, stuff that isn't in the notes. Why did we have fables in the first place way back when? Uh, Jakers? To teach kids not to be dumb. Nice, we don't teach, and that's why we still have school to this day, to teach kids not to be dumb. And then we have our five characteristics. And because I'm a glutton for punishment, you can do these in any order when you go through them. So, Rackley, your choice. What are one of the five things that makes a fable a fable? Um, moral. Moral. Uh, what's a moral? Uh, the lesson learned. Works for me. Lesson learned. Has to have a moral. If no moral, then we're going to be out of luck from there. Uh, Bauer, pick another thing. The characters, the length, the tone. What's that? The characters. Yeah, what kind of characters? Animals. Nice. Are you asking me? No. What was the answer? Animals. Nice. We're done. Has to have animals as your main character. Well, should, not all of them, but because they're small and fluffy and adorable and they're going to be fun to eat. Uh, Crenshaw, another one is? Short. Nice. We're done. It should be brief or short, not very long, because kids are going to tune you out, uh, which would just be awful. Brandon Berger, we have two left. You have your choice of either of those two that are up there. My you cannot look at your notebook, but I have faith in you. One of them is going to talk about the tone, because we don't want to scare. Oh, it's not, yeah, it's like not boring. Not boring. You can look. Like, it's sad and I have to tone. See, I have faith in you. Well, well done. It should be rawr, humorous, funny, not boring. You should not have poor little chipmunks that are coughing up blood. And then the last one we have up there, bomb, is the age it's aimed at. You're never too old to be an idiot. For some of you, I know, hashtag life goal. Uh, oh, I'm going to be an idiot forever. Well, you got to start at some point. Like, you know, doing it on the homework side, which is on the left. And so those are going to be the different things that go homework. Weird how it's written right there where it says homework. It was tricky of me. Um, then we got into the guy that made uh, Fables famous, Pavement, who uh, he only has one name, like Drake. Although Drake technically has a last name. It's the awesome. Uh, remember who the guy created Fables? Oh, no, it, with a. it does, and it ends with a sop, which it's makes it a sop. nicely done. Oh, that all that it's together. A it is like, not only is it like a sop, it, it is a sop. Uh, whistle, roughly, give me scared eyes, Faith. Roughly, when did he live? How? Um, 500 BC. I would also accept a long time ago. 
you have said. Uh, you were right, the 620 to 560, but I would also take a lot. Ooh, and we also have keys. What continent was he originally from? Africa. Nicely done. He was originally from Africa. He was a slave. Uh, and he was a slave. I figure eventually you're going to put the iPad back, and the only way to get that back is by giving you the deck of cards. He was going to be a trade. It's like a barter system. But how do I get the deck of cards back? That's up to you. That sounds like a you issue. Ah, and so from there, he was originally from Africa, and then he goes and lives in another country for most of his life. Bickle, remember what country he goes to live in? They came and took him. Greece. Nicely done. Way to be strong on that one. Why does he go and choose to live in Greece? Julie B. To show he doesn't get killed. And because one of the options was to be killed, and when he goes to Greece, what does he have to be? A slave. He starts off from Africa, and then the Greeks show up, and they take him, and they say, we can either kill you, or you can be a slave. And he's like, I'm going to do the option right. Don't die. Like, fine, whatever. And he goes back and becomes a slave. And then, <coughs> did we get to him telling stories in Greece? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, because that's where he's working there, and he see, sees the kids running around, hitting each other in the head with rocks. And he's like, you can't hit each other in the head with rocks. Like, you can't stop me. He's like, have you heard the story about the rhinoceros and the monkey? And I go, no. And he starts telling them that story. And then they tell their father, and then we eventually get him, we got to tell the stories too. The king. All right, we don't have a king. The government. The emperor. It's a, like a king, but spelled differently. Uh, the emperor, and then did we get to what he eventually got yes. from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Nice, we done again, so he eventually got, he got much farther than you guys. He eventually was freed, and then see from there, did we get to the issue of all the stories he was telling? Yeah, they were. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they, they were. were oh, yeah, they were. What's, the, what's it called? Plagiarizing. Yeah. They were plagiarizing. Now you can open the notebooks. That's as far as I did not get farther than that. That's pretty. I got farther than you guys than anybody else. Go. She says, ironically, talking out loud. I like how you play that game. Uh, so the fact that plagiarized all these stories. And the emperor loves using Aesop to tell stories whenever people from other countries show up. He uses him as the way of sort of connecting with others. The problem is, he didn't make up these stories. He just stole them from others. But people were okay with that. When he started making money, going around telling stories, they liked it. And when they would show up to hear him, he'd get done like, well, that was a great story, but have you heard the story of the snake and the cricket? And he's like, I have not. And they're like, well, my grandpa told it to me. And they would tell him the story of the snake and the cricket. Aesop would then steal that story and reuse it as his own and retell it again later on. But people would happily give him their stories just to hear him retell it in his own version. Well, years go by, and he becomes more and more famous. So one day... There's a war that breaks out, and Greece goes and fights this other country, and the city of Delphi, which is in Greece, helps out Greece by sending the best warriors ever to go and help out. And these warriors of Delphi, these Delphinians, turn the tide of the war, and the emperor believes there's no way they would have won if not for Delphi. So he decides he wants to thank the Delphinians. So he comes up with a plan. He goes, Aesop, come in here. And Aesop comes into the emperor, and he goes, all right, these Delphinians, they helped us win. I don't think we could have done it without them, so I want to thank them. And he goes, that's a great idea. He goes, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to send you and a bag of gold to the city of Delphi. What I want you to do is to give every person in that town three pieces of gold, big old chunks of gold, which is more gold than they've ever seen. And you're going to give each person three, and you're going to stick around, and you're going to tell stories to them. And Aesop goes, all right, I think that's a great idea. I'm definitely in for it. So Aesop takes his big bag of gold and heads out to the city-state of Delphi. Shows up. He's like, I'm here to tell you stories and give you gold. And they're like, yay, it's National Aesop Day. We're excited. He goes, here's what we need from you guys. Form a line. I'm going to give you three pieces of gold. I'm going to make a little mark on your hand. And we'll try to do this as quickly as possible. And then I can start telling stories. Before he gets a chance to start, there's a group of people who then stand up. And they go, um... We, we have a small problem. He goes, who are you? What problem do you have? And the people who stand up were all the warriors who went off and fought in this battle. And they go, um, we have an issue uh, with how you're handing stuff out. We like the fact you're here, and the fact you're giving out money is wonderful. It's incredible. Um, but we just disagree with how you're going about doing it. He goes, what do you mean? They go, well, here's the problem. You're going to give three pieces of gold to everyone in this town, but it's only a small group of us warriors, those who went out and fought, 
who went out and did the battle and had to camp out there and had to get you know fired at and killed. Some of us died and didn't come back. And Bob over here only has one leg. Uh, and so because of stuff like that, I think it's only fair that all of the warriors get four pieces of gold each. Uh, and everyone else only gets two pieces of gold because we did more work than they did. So we should receive more of the gold. And Asaph goes, oh, well, I guess that's a good point. I hadn't thought before he can continue. Another group stands up and they raise their hands. They go, um, we have a problem with that. He goes, who are you? And it's a group of the women stand up. They go, hey, um, we also disagree with how you're handing out the money. And he goes, what do you mean? They go, well, we don't think it's fair that everyone's getting three pieces of gold because the men who have to go fight, they're a bunch of boys, and boys like fighting. Uh, so we should not be giving them more money for doing something that they enjoy. Uh, so plus Bob was born with one leg, so that's not really a good argument anyway. And so we had to stay back and take care of the kids, and they're a bunch of little bratty children, and the fact that our husbands weren't here to help out, and the fact that it was sort of like chaos, we had to run the whole town, the women should get four pieces of gold, and everyone else should get two. That's the only way to make it fair. And he said, goes, well, that's a, that's a good point. Maybe I should, before he can continue, another group stands up. They go, um, we have an issue with what you're doing too. He goes, who are you? They go, we're the farmers, uh, and here's our issue with it. Um, those guys went off to go fight, and they did their whole stabby, stabby thing, and they probably had a good time. The women stayed back home, and they took care of their own kids who are brats, and no one likes them. Uh, Bob over here is a jerk, and no one's liked him since he was born. So we think the fact that the farmers had to give up all of their food, that means we should get four pieces of gold because we had to give up our crops to feed everybody and didn't get paid for it, and everyone else should get two pieces of gold. And all the groups start arguing and yelling and fighting and going back and forth, and they can't come up with a good solution. So Aesop goes, all right, listen, can we all agree that you all did something different, but you all worked together, and that's why you all deserve the three pieces of gold? And they go, no, who gets more? You have to decide. Rawr, rawr, rawr. He goes, all right, fine. How about this? I'll give you a demonstration about why you should work together, and we'll see if it changes your mind. And they go, all right, demonstration. She goes, follow me. And he goes and grabs the big bag of gold, puts it back in the wagon, and has everyone in the town follow him all the way out on this big, long path until it gets to this big, gigantic lake that was just outside the city state of Delphi. He goes, all right. He takes the big bag of gold, and walks over this little rowboat, and drops it into the rowboat, and begins rowing out there. Row, row, row. You row. Uh, he gets out to the middle of this big lake. He goes, can you hear me? And they go, we can hear you. He goes, all right. Now, I came here to give each one of you three pieces of gold, which is more gold than you've had in your entire life. But you all fought and said each of you deserve more than everyone else. So instead of working together, you all fought against each other. So because of that, things like this will happen. And he picks up the big bag of gold. And they go, yay, gold! He goes, you see the gold? They go, yay! He goes, do you see the lake? They go, yay, lake! No! And he goes, yeah! <laughs> and he throws it. He goes, kiss, kiss, bloop, bloop. And it sings out, and they start yelling. No! He goes, ah, shh! Just wait. Sits back down and rows back to him. And then gets out and walks up. Now listen. Understand. I showed up here with three pieces of gold for all of you. But you fought. And now you have no gold. If you had simply worked together, you would have something. Because you fought, you have nothing. Working together solves problems. Do you understand? And the townspeople go, working together! And they did, to kill him. Aesop was ripped to pieces by an angry mob at that moment. And that was how Aesop died. He was killed by an angry mob when he refused to give them money because he threw it into a lake as opposed to giving it to them when they refused to work together. He died doing what he loved, teaching. Which is how I would like to die. Or have some kind of weird beard mishap involving machinery. It'll be fun. Now, Aesop is gone no longer with us, and it is a sad day. But, these people he told the stories to, well, one, the people he told the stories to were illiterate, um, which is going to affect things a little bit. Do you guys know what illiterate means? Do we know what literate means? Let's go with, do we know what literature is? Good. Writing in books. 
So to be literate means you can use literature. So what do you have to be able to do to use literature? Right. Be able to read and write. So that means literate. Illiterate is the opposite of that, which is not, 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 not being able to read or write. Most of the people that Aesop told his stories to were illiterate, meaning they could not read or write. Once he dies, these people he told the stories to could not read or write. But yet, we still have these stories today. How is that possible? That they could not read or write, and yet we still have these stories. They yeah? Pass, they pass it down to the generation. How? By telling everybody no, around town, and they would keep going on. We use this magical thing called oral tradition. An oral tradition is where you pass down a story from family member to family member, and it stays around for years and years. So even though Aesop died, we got all of these stories from him still, because people who listened to his stories would then go and tell other people, and they would pass down from person to person. And oftentimes, you'll have oral tradition in your own families. You'll have stories that get passed down, and they go to family meals at Thanksgiving or Christmas, and they get together and talk about crazy grandma on that one time that she went skydiving or whatnot bounced a couple times because she was too old to pull the ripcord. And so you'll pass down these stories from year to year, and they pass on to your kids and fun stuff like that. But there's a problem with oral tradition. Something happens to our stories. It gets all screwy. They get all changed, which is the same thing that happens with fables. As they got passed down from year to year, they would get changed. And so a lot of times we're going to have multiple versions of all of these different fables. The tortoise and the hare, there's multiple versions out there. When we had Greek mythology, it was the same issue. With Greek mythology, those stories would change as they got passed down from person to person. There is no one correct version. There's just different versions of it. And we'll see the same thing with fables, that two people can do the same fable and tell it in completely different ways. And that is okay. With this, there's another issue with fables, which is... How long are they supposed to be? Short. With them being short, we don't have a lot of time for character development. And so because of that, we're going to introduce a word to you called motif. M-O-T-I-F. Motif is not what hillbillies ask for for Christmas. It's motif. Motif is when you have the same character popping up in multiple stories. A common character popping up in multiple stories. Is that like um, Harry Potter showing up in like eight Harry Potter books? Nope, not like that at all. Those are just sequels. A motif is where they're completely different characters, but as soon as you see this character, you know what kind of person or character it's supposed to be. You'll see this in fairy tales. It's one of the easiest ways to make an example of it. Um, in fairy tales, whenever we have a stepmother, we know exactly what kind of character the stepmother is going to be. Because in every fairy tale, what kind of character is the stepmother? Evil. They're always evil. Every stepmother is evil. It's not their fault. It's how they are genetically. I've got three of them myself. They're all evil. Just messing with you. You know what stepmothers make you do? Write down the notes. Oh, yeah. Oh, Mr. Bloviak, like you're so subtle. Nope. So what we're going to do is, as an example, if I were to give you a story called The Bear and the Chipmunk, before we even get into it, you can already guess something about those characters. Which one's going to be the mean character? Bear. Bear. Which one's going to be the wussy character? Chipmunk. I haven't even told you the story yet. How would you know? Because of motifs. Because before you get into it, you already know what kind of characters they're going to be. And so we have a bunch of animals that sort of fit in this kind of thing. Mr. Broviak, is that like stereotyping? Yes, it's exactly like stereotyping. So it's the exact same idea as stereotyping, except with animals. So as an example, if we were to have an owl in our, in our story, what are we going to know that owl kind of character is going to be? Smart. There you go. Smart, nerdy, wise. But I thought that's because all owls are smart. No, they're actually pretty dumb. Um, they're like the seventh graders of the uh, bird world. Uh, 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 but no, I mean, they are inquisitive. They like to ask questions, but that's about it. That's right. Classic joke. 
So that would be an example of OT. As soon as you see an owl, you know it's probably going to be the smart one. If I tell you the story of the bear and the owl, it's like, oh, I bet that bear does well on the test. Probably not. That's not what I'm going with it. If I say, this is the story of the bear and the owl. One is a smart one and one's going to be a bully. You can already jump into it and know which one's going to be which. Chavez, Chavez. So wait, if that story was real, wouldn't it be about bullying and the bear taking the owl's lunch money? Very well. Look at that. It's like it writes itself. If I wanted a bully, mean, or tough animal, which one would you expect? Tiger. Bear. Bear. I can see a tiger showing shark. up in that same one. Uh, do you see a shark? I can see a shark in the jungles. There's sharks that are out there. Um, in order to make fun of you a little bit more, uh, we get the word bully from an animal. A bull. A bull. A bull. The word bully comes from a bull because when you go into the pen, it kept attacking and chasing after you. So when you have someone that keeps coming at you, you're like, oh, they're being like a bull. That's why you call them a bully. And then if you're little pigs, usually a wolf will be the mean one that you have to worry about. A cat, what, Mr. Brown? Yeah. Cats can do more than one character. Uh, and cats could be two, because if I say, hey, here's a story about the cat and the chipmunk. Well, which one's going to be the bully? The cat. And so, but if I say, here's a story about the Great Dane and the kitten. Like, well, the kitten's probably not going to be the bully. So is that the same idea? Sneaky, thief, or tricky character? Cat. Cat. Cat can be sometimes, but usually ones that pop up more often. If you are a small Hispanic girl with a backpack? Dora! Monkey! Swiper! Swiper! Swiper's not an animal. Fox. There you go. He's a fox. There's another one that has a built-in face mask. Raccoon. The raccoon. And because a lot of these take place or are written in Europe, um, the weasel shows up quite a bit. So you have the fox, the weasel, the raccoon, the small child in the front row writing down notes. All different types of motifs. Raccoon smell weird. Probably should stop snorting raccoon. <laughs> we all have our hobbies. There's one that's known for having a good memory. Elephant. Ooh, elephant. Elephant. I don't know. Elephant. That's my favorite. It's ironic animal. if you forget. Tyler forgets everything. The same motif, what is it that elephants are scared of? Mouse. Which is also not true. They're not scared of mice. They just stomp on them. But that goes on that same stereotyping idea. If we have a rabbit or a cheetah, what would you expect? Fast. Nice. They're probably going to be fast or quick. Just like if I want an animal that's going to be slow, turtles, turtles one, a sloth. Snail. sloth pops up, and a snail. Those are all ones I've seen. Turtles, snails, sloths. I've also seen the sloth be lazy. Like usually the turtle doesn't play the lazy role, but sometimes you'll have an animal. The turtles lay on their back, they don't do anything. Okay. okay. Once again, you have interesting hobbies. Before you get in trouble yelling out someone's name, no. uh, there is a farm animal which will oftentimes play this role. Cow. Cow. You can just push them over when they're sleeping, and so the cow will oftentimes be considered dumb, which is ironic because cows are actually genetically have two brains. Whoa. Nope, just made that up. Just wanted to see if you were paying attention. They do have multiple stomachs, but that does not affect the being smart. Actually, that was true. I should be. Which is weird because I can throw in random true facts just to throw you off they the should. They Two stomachs that has to digest food in one and then go to the second one, but I don't know. Don't they have eight? I don't know. At least two. Eight's bigger than two. Messy or slob? Oftentimes your parents will give you a hard time. Okay. Oh, there you go. Prepare oh. <coughs> your room to it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There is another farm animal that is known for being hungry and eating everything. Goat. Goat. I will also take teenage boy. <laughs> Definitely a type of animal. <laughs> Two left we have on there. Multiples will do this one. It's the shy and quiet. It'll be almost any animal that doesn't make a lot of noise. I've seen, I've seen mice. I've seen deer. I've seen Tyler having to leave. For me, yeah. 
For the talkative and outgoing spots. You a type of bird is known for talking? The butter. Uh, uh, parrot. Oh, parrot. Oh, singing bird. And there's a type of dog that's known for making lots of noise non-stop. The chihuahua. There's so many. The chihuahua. I used to Chihuahua. How do you spell chihuahua? Chihuahua. Wow. That's a good one. I know. I'm learning. Who would have thought it would happen in school? I wasn't expecting the Chihuahua who would dance, but. I have a Mexican Chihuahua. I believe that is the only kind of Chihuahua that exists. I have a. As opposed to those rare Italian Chihuahuas. There's Ah, you can keep out your notes if you want. We're going to take a look at a couple of different fables and see if you can do three things. One, figure out the motifs that go into it. What type of fable is it? Because we have, what are the three types of fables? Modern, modern, and birth. And the last part will be to figure out what the moral is. Oh, 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 oh is that so Don't be scared, it's just a fable. So it's called The Lion and the Mouse. Before we even get into it, what can you guess this uh, fable will be about just from that? Julie B? The lion is what? I can see that. Lion's a bad person. Kaylee? It's about a lion and a mouse. Nailed it. About a lion and a mouse. Yeah, yeah, about what the lion and a mouse might be doing. Anything about those characters? No, but they're definitely in there. I say they're definitely in there. And so, in there, we're going to have one be a bully and one be a victim. Lion, the mouse, and mouse is a victim. Let's find out. The mouse Ooh. is the bully. And of the three types of fables, we, just by looking at it, you can tell one of them is not going to be. Oh, it's, it's, Why do you say not verse? It doesn't look good. Not written like a poem. So now we're going to all read it. We'll figure out two things. Is it traditional or modern? And then also, what's the moral? Between traditional and modern, if there's no evidence to make it modern, I would go with traditional. So if you don't have like evidence of today e things happening, and you're not like, it could be either, then just go traditional. Once, when a lion was asleep, a little mouse began running up and down on him. First of all, that mouse was an idiot. This soon woke the lion, who placed his huge paw on top of him and opened his big jaws to swallow him. Pardon, O king of the jungle, cried the little mouse. Forgive me this time. I shall never forget it. Who knows? I may be able to do you a favor one of these days. The lion was so amused at the idea of the mouse being able to help him that he lifted up his paw and let him go. Some weeks after this, the lion was caught in a trap, and the hunters, who desired to carry him alive to the king, tied him to a tree while they went in search of a wagon in which to carry him. Just then, the little mouse happened to pass by, and seeing the sad condition in which the lion was caught and tied, went up to him and soon gnawed away the ropes that bound the king of the beasts. Was I not right? said the little mouse. First off, between traditional and modern, by a show of hands, have you say this is modern and is very today -y? No. Have you guys say traditional and very old timey? Have you say I'm just scared to vote? Well done, those of you who said traditional. Definitely a traditional one. My next question, moral. Can you figure out what it is we were supposed to learn from it? And can you give me an evidence from the fable to prove your thinking about what we're supposed to learn from it? Bomb. Prove it from using the fable. The, the lion caught him and said, and the little mouse said, I can help you. And the lion got trapped and the mouse saved him. It's not a person's size that counts. Well done, Bob. Same idea. This next one, I think, will be pretty easy as soon as you see it. Uh -huh. Called the tortoise and the hare. What type of fable is it? Uh, How do you know? Ooh, what do we call those things? Stanzas. 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 I'm not going to read through that. We've done the tortoise and the hare. Although this one's a much better verse one than mine yesterday, only because my one yesterday was awful. 
This one's called the bad kangaroo. We've not done kangaroos as a motif yet, so this one we'll sort of have to figure out as we get into it. Ooh, which type of fable is it not? How do we know? So then this one figure out traditional modern and then what we're supposed to learn. There was a small kangaroo who was bad in school. He put thumbtacks on the teacher's chair. He threw spitballs across the classroom. He set off firecrackers in the lavatory, and he spread glue on the doorknobs. Um, if you don't know what a lavatory is, it's a fancy name for a bathroom. Oh, yeah. Your behavior is impossible, said the school principal. I am going to see your parents. I will tell them what a problem you are. The principal went to visit Mr. and Mrs. Kangaroo. He sat down in a living room chair. Ow! cried the principal. There's a thumbtack on this chair. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, said Mr. Kangaroo. I enjoy putting thumbtacks in chairs. There was suddenly a loud noise from down the hallway. Forgive me, said Mrs. Kangaroo to the principal. The firecrackers that we keep in the medicine chest just exploded. We love the noise. The principal rushed for the front door. In an instant, he was stuck to the doorknob. Pull hard, said Mr. Kangaroo. There are little globs of glue on all of our doorknobs. The principal pulled himself free. He dashed out of the house and ran off down the street. Such a nice person, said Mr. Kangaroo. I wonder why he left so quickly. No doubt he had another appointment, said Mrs. Kangaroo. Never mind, supper's ready. Mr. and Mrs. Kangaroo and their son enjoyed their evening meal. After dessert, they all threw spitballs at each other across the dining room table. First off, traditional or modern? So raise your hand if you say modern and traditional. Good job. Definitely modern on that one. Next question. What is our moral? What is it we're supposed to learn from this one? Not to, turn to Not to talk to your parents. Something every kid could probably learn. Chavez, Chavez. Good, but that's not really going to apply to people. But you're on the right track. Smith. Don't do what you do at home at school. Ooh. How so? It's not bad. I was just saying if you could support it for anything from the fable. You're so close to having boo hiss. You should kind of have like a public pers uh, not personality, like the way you act in public oh. and the way you act at home. This should be kind of different. And how to connect it to the fable? Because uh, the kangaroo uh, acts all crazy at home, but at school he gets in trouble because of it. Not so, bad. Yeah. <laughs> and let's see, they went four. A child's actions reflect that of their parents. Just the same idea that often the idea that we have kids who get in school in trouble for stuff at school that they get away with at home. We have kids who get in trouble for cussing all the time at school. But when you call home, you find out that their parents are, which has happened to me when I had a kid who cussed. And I had to call the parents and I had to talk and calling the dad. He was like, "What? He was cussing at school?" And I heard him start yelling at his son over the phone and cussing at him. He's like, "Get over here! You bleep me, bleep me! Why would you bleep me do that? I'm a bleep me I'm like. Ugh. I was like, never mind, sir. I understand completely. And so it was like, well, then why would you not expect your kid to be cussing at me? So, same argument. I'll be cussing out. Quiz on Monday.